LXL A-Level Maths, Pure Paper 1, June 2022, Question 16. Figure 6 shows a sketch of the curve C with parametric equations x equals 8 sine squared t and y equals 2 sine 2t two plus 3 sine t for t between 0 and pi over 2. The region R, shown shaded in figure 6, is bounded by C, the x-axis and the line with equation x equals 4. For part A, we need to show that the area of R is given by the integral between 0 and A of 8 minus 8 cos 4t plus 48 sine squared t cos t dt, where A is a constant to be found. To solve this, we're going to use our formula for the area of a region when we've got parametric equations, and that is the integral of y dx by dt dt. So to do this, we're going to need to find dx by dt. So x is 8 sine squared t. If we differentiate this, we're going to use the chain rule. So that power, the 2, will come to the front to give us 16. It will drop by 1 to give us sine t. But then we're also going to multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cos. So dx by dt is going to equal 16 sine t cos t. So again, that was by the chain rule. We're also going to need to find the bounds. So we know that this is bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and x equals 4. So we're looking at between x equals 0 and 4. So when x is 0, that would mean 8 sine squared t is equal to 0. So sine t would have to be 0, hence t is also 0. When x equals 4, a little bit trickier, we're going to have 8 sine squared t equals 4. Dividing both sides by 8, we get that sine squared t equals a half. So sine t must equal 1 over root 2. I'm just taking the positive square roots here because we want a positive t. Inverse sine of that will give us that t is equal to pi over 4. So the bounds that we're going to put on our integral are 0 and pi over 4. We're now going to put our y and our dx by dt into our formula for the area along with those bounds. So we get that the area is equal to the integral between 0 and pi over 4 of 2 sine 2t two plus 3 sine t, that's our y, times by our dx by dt, 16 sine t cos t, all of respect to t. If we multiply that bracket out, we're going to get 32 sine 2t two sine t cos t plus 48 sine squared t cos t dt. So far, so good. We've got an integral, it ends in 48 sine squared t cos t, as required, and we've worked out the bounds. But we've got 32 sine 2t sine t cos t at the beginning, we're aiming for 8 minus 8 cos 40. So we need to convert this somehow. So what I've noticed is we've got sine 2t and we've got sine t cos t. And if we think of our double angle formulae, sine 2t equals 2 sine t cos t. Now, as we're aiming to get a cos with 4t in there, instead of replacing the sine 2t, bringing it all down to t, I'm going to replace the sine t cos t. So 32 sine t cos t is going to be equal to 16 sine 2t. So that first term is going to become 16 sine squared 2t. Now, we still need to get this into cos 4t. So let's have a look at the double angle formula for cos but this time using 4t. One way of writing that is 1 minus 2 sine squared 2t. We've used this form because we want to get rid of that sine squared. So rearranging this, we get that 2 sine squared 2t equals 1 minus cos 4t, but we've got 16 sine squared. So multiplying through by 8, 16 sine squared 2t equals 8 minus 8 cos 4t. So let's substitute that in. We've got the integral between 0 and pi over 4, of 8 minus 8 cos 4t plus 48 sine squared t cos t dt, which is what we were aiming for. For part b, hence using algebraic integration, we need to find the exact area of r. So the hence in this question tells us that we're going to use part a. So here's the integral that we found. Let's solve this by integrating each term step by step. So the integral of 8 with respect to t it's nice and easy, that just becomes 8t. 8 cos 4t, if we integrate cos, we get sine. 
And remember, if we were to differentiate sine 4t, that 4 would come out to the front. So we need to divide by that 4, so we get minus 2 sine 4t. And then we need to integrate 48 sine squared t cos t. So we should be able to recognise that this is of the form sine to a power times by cos that doesn't have a power. So when we integrate something like this, remember differentiating the chain rule as we did at the beginning, we're going to end up with sine cubed, that power is going to go up one, the cos will disappear and we need to divide by that new power. So we end up with 16 sine cubed t. Now, if, if you were just to try to differentiate 16 sine cubed t by the chain rule, you'd see that we'd get the 48 sine squared cos that we started with. We've got this in our square brackets and I put the bounds on the end, pi over 4 and 0. So now to find the exact area, we're going to put those bounds in pi over 4 first, and then we're going to subtract the answers we'd get if we put the 0 in. So we end up with 8 times pi over 4 minus 2 sine four lots of pi over four is pi, plus 16 sine cubed pi over four, minus, in the brackets, eight lots of zero, zero, minus two sine zero, plus 16 sine cubed zero. Let's try simplifying this now. So eight lots of pi over four is two pi, sine pi is zero, so just a minus zero there, plus 16 lots of root two over two, so that's our sine pi over four, and then all three terms in that second bracket are zero because sine zero is still zero. Simplifying this, we end up with a final answer of two pi plus four root two. And that's the exact area of R. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.